Hey everybody, uh, Greg here, and today I have Emily Shea with me, graphic designer extraordinaire from Blind, <laughs> and today we're gonna look through her very first portfolio after graduating, is that right? Yes. Okay, so we're gonna look through all of her projects, ask a bunch of embarrassing questions, and I think it's gonna be a lot of fun. Welcome back, guys. Welcome back, guys. <laughs> <laughs> um, let's get started, huh? So, Emily, what are we looking at? Before We're, we like really dig in, like get, get, give us an idea of like, this is a time capsule in, mm -hmm. in your life. So, uh, what year is it and, and where are you as a graphic designer? Right, so I graduated April of 2016. And so this is all the work that I've um, compiled together for my graduation show. And so, this is kind of all the work from my junior year to my senior year and some from professional work because I also interned and freelanced at Blind during mm -hmm. my school year. So Remember there's that? a little bit of um, student work and professional work. Okay. Yeah. Dang, 2000, 2016. 2016. Okay. It is 2018 right now. <laughs> like, oh my God, that seems like yesterday. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Okay, and then you interned with us what year? I interned uh, September of 2014 with 2014. you guys. Okay. Right. So right. it's been um, a little over two years, almost three, three, three years, almost four years. Cool. Wow, okay. So you had a good chunk of time before uh, to work on portfolio stuff while you're in school before you graduated. Right. That's great. Mm -hmm. Cool. Okay. Well, let's, let's get into it, right? All right, so what are we looking at first? All right, so I put together a reel for my portfolio. Usually reels are for graphic, I mean a graphic designer, motion designers, animators, mm -hmm. but my wall, I had two big screens. I had an iMac screen and I had um, a screen for um, some interaction work. Mm -hmm. And so I wanted to put something that was moving all the time. So I just okay. put together a graphic design reel. Graphic design reel. <laughs> yeah. I like that. Yeah. You, you don't see very much of that. Right. So that's, uh, that's an interesting approach. Uh -huh. Okay. All right. Let's watch it. What was the thinking behind uh, making a, like a video reel as a graphic designer? Like, why did you decide to do that? I always wanted to do graphic design with a little bit of motion design. Like, I think network rebrands are like the perfect um, project for me because mm -hmm. it's graphic design, but it also moves. Right. And also, like, one of my biggest dreams is to work on a movie, to see my name in the credits. Okay. Like, somehow incorporate what I know into a movie. Like, just the feeling of seeing your work on a big screen, like, mm. it's really... It's really cool for me. Okay. Yeah, and so when I graduated, I always wanted to do motion graphics. Oh, but okay. I think personally I was stronger in um, brand identity. Hmm. So just a little part of me still wants to do motion graphics, but you know, I was still a graphic designer. Wow. <laughs> so I, I think I didn't that's know what, that. yeah. It's cool. Um, I think when I interned, I interned with the mindset of, oh, I'm gonna come to blind and I'm gonna design frames. Okay. Yeah. Where the first half of my internship, I helped you with the Nat Geo projects, like I did yeah. Cinema 4D and I designed frames. But for the second part of my internship, I was helping Chris with the brand identity stuff. Mm -hmm. And so I think that kind of shifted my whole um, career path. Yeah. yeah. You came in at a uh, pivotal moment, I, mm -hmm. I think, in our company too. Yeah. You know, like mm -hmm. coming off of doing motion work and then moving more toward brand identity yeah so that's that's interesting you got to really kind of experience both mm -hmm. okay that's cool yeah all right and you just wanted to see your stuff on a big screen like yeah for the glory yeah okay <laughs> I get it I yeah. get it makes sense all right so cool where do we go next um, so this is uh, one of the uh, student projects that I've done in school mm -hmm. I think this is I, I did this uh, my second to last term of school um, it's for a network of epic, epics. Mm -hmm. Have you ever heard of it? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, sure. yeah. It's kind of like uh, Netflix, but on the TV. But epics. Epics. Got it. Right. And so this is kind of like a um, promo that I've done. Okay. So this is a network rebrand school mm -hmm. project. Okay. So yeah. I see lots of, there's lots of type over picture. 
Um, lots of motion. Did, did you animate this stuff as well, or just yeah. the design? You partnered with someone, or? Yeah, I animated everything except the logo. So we did everything from um, a logo, a new logo to new type, and we had transitions, lower thirds, and new slogan. Actually, mm -hmm. right. So like the whole kind of uh, network package. Right. Got it. Okay. So I'm, I'm trying to think, like, if I'm looking at this as a whole, what is, what is Epics about, like, and, and how did your design mm -hmm. speak to that? Right, so I think this is one of the um, first project that I took uh, on after I interned at Blind. So I mm. kind of took what, everything that I learned from Blind and kind of injected it into this project. And so I kind of did, like, a... a like a short strategy mm -hmm. uh, breakdown, is that what oh, you would okay. call it? Yeah, yeah. Right, so I identified their pain points. Like when you go on the Epics website, it was just all over the place. The categories aren't very clear. And even if I wanted to watch something, I don't know how to search for it. Mm. And so the new rebrand that I've done is that I split it into different categories. So I think the white one was for movies, and then the red style frames is for sitcoms sitcom okay or comedy and then the black was for sports because it'll be really beneficial and profitable for them if they do air sports on their channel like live sports live right. sports okay right. yeah yeah i mean as i understand it's pretty it's pretty hard exactly to, hard but because off, it's but... a student project you could do anything you want sure yeah <laughs> yeah, yeah sky's the limit yeah okay cool but the the idea is you develop this visual system where the kind of uh, light gray background meant one thing, red mm -hmm. meant another, and then the dark one meant sports. Mm -hmm. Okay. I think the dark one was sports. That makes total sense. It's very clear. Mm -hmm. I think I'm a little confused about the red. I'm a little confused about the light background because mm -hmm. I see I see Wreck-It Ralph right. in both white and red. Mm -hmm. So I, 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 like the, I like the thinking there mm -hmm. because you still get like the brand colors in there too, but you get to mm -hmm. kind of categorize them. Yeah. So that was the main... Um, difference between the old website and the new rebrand that I've done. Cool. Okay. So you did website, you did brand, network package mm -hmm. for Epics. And then what made you choose Epics? Were you like It was a specific there was only four oh, options. Okay. It was a hist or three options. History Channel, Epics and uh, it was like a Turner Classic. Turner, oh Turner Classic. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. It was one of those three. All right. Got it. So what's next? And the next one is a group project. It group was a project. sponsored project that a I've done. A sponsored project? Yeah. What does that mean? That means, um, so, I mean, each sponsored project works differently, but for this specific sponsored project, it's for Honda Research America. Mm -hmm. They gave each of us $2,000. Whoa. Yeah, to okay. work on this project. So cool. whatever you need from printing um, to, you know, buying a new laptop, like sure. They'll just give you two hundred two thousand dollars. Did just, you buy a new laptop? No, I didn't. No. Okay. I think I spent most of it on like food. Food. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah. Well, other than food, let's see what you did with that one. Okay. <laughs> so they reached out to us for a rebrand of their current team. They didn't really have an identity, and no one really knew about them. So right. This is a whole rebrand of their research group. Okay. Right. And this is like a like, just a kind of like subsect of, of Honda, mm -hmm. like within the, okay. Right. And so in the beginning of this class, they, um, each one of us did logo explorations mm -hmm. and um, the instructor chose the best logos and then split us into group. Got it. So I didn't okay. actually make this logo. It was one of my team members logo, our idea. And then me and my other friend, we just joined into the group and it's finished out the rest of the identity system. You're like, I like what you're doing. So we're just gonna join your group. Yeah. And I yeah. see, I see, <laughs> okay. How, what, what do you think about this logo? Like, like what, and I know you didn't design it necessarily, but what was the thinking behind it? Like, It's actually H-R-A. H-R-A, yeah. okay. So okay. the H-R-A is all connected. So I did not see the R. Yeah, I'll it's a honest. little hard. I, I, I didn't see it. Yeah, we wanted a pattern. Um, I mean, not a pattern. We wanted a logo where we can make it into a pattern. Mm. Right. Okay. And it's supposed to indicate like tire tread? Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. So we came up with a tagline too. 
mm -hmm. with what's next without any punctuation. So we can phrase that as a question and also as a statement. Statement. Right. Right. Okay. What's next? Okay. So let's let's go back up to this. So mm -hmm. what what was this for? This this bit of design. I think it was just to show off the slogan. There weren't necessarily anything specific, like oh, this is for wall graphics or anything like that. Mm, okay. Yeah. So what? See the type. So what? Slash. Next. Okay. So I have a lot of questions. <laughs> okay. <laughs> let's let's start with the background. What? Mm -hmm. What's uh, what does that mean? What's going on back there? It's a tiny little detail of a car. A car? Yeah. Oh, okay, so you're getting some of the like reflection stuff there. Mm -hmm. Okay, so when you look at it now, mm -hmm. five years later, let's say, mm -hmm. almost five, what, what what do you think of, of this image? Like, what's what's going on here? I still love the typeface. <laughs> I still love the typeface. Okay. <laughs> what, what else? Um, I think some grids would help. Mm -hmm. I see some like you know misalignments. There's like weird spacing. I think it could have used a better image. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I, I tend to agree. Because a couple things I noticed right away was mm -hmm. <laughs> some strange alignment yeah. choices. Uh -huh. um, I'm also not sure what the, what the slash mm -hmm. is, is doing, you know? That was just one of our secondary elements okay. that we okay. have in our identity system. Yeah. So, yeah, the, the slash kind of throws me off because mm -hmm. it... It almost like breaks the frame into two sections, so it's like what's and then next, and mm -hmm. it's, it's a little confusing. Right, breaks up the flow of the right. slogan. Yeah, it looks like the slogan are is like two separate ideas, mm -hmm. right? They're not necessarily connected. Um, <laughs> the the background the background's interesting. I don't know I don't know what that means. I definitely didn't see a car yeah. when, when I first looked at it. I think that's what we were. That's. The point or that's our intention mm. but i think we could have chose a better, better picture or a better composition of a car because mm -hmm. there's um yeah you're right there's a, there's like a lot going on up here yeah and i don't know what it is <laughs> it looks like this could be like the like the wheel well uh -huh. you know like side of a car or something yeah. but i agree with you <laughs> that's that's the beauty yeah. of this you know this is 2013 Mm -hmm. Emily, graphic designer, yeah. and we're we're here now. And we're yeah, looking at 2018. it. And, you know, hindsight is is twenty twenty. You look at this stuff. And you're just like, oh my god, what was I thinking? <laughs> what am I doing? So yeah, this is great. Mm -hmm. That that's a sign of of progress. Yeah, right? of growth. Yes. Yeah. Very good. Cool. Okay. What's what's next? Ha. All right. Ha. What's next? <laughs> uh, sorry. <laughs> what are we looking at now? Um, it's a rebrand for a planetarium named Adler Planetarium in mm -hmm. Chicago, Illinois. And this is a poster, it, it looks like, and you have some some quotes. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then is this intended to, like, you said be three Three vertical, posters? right, okay. posters, but when you put it together, it connects. They all connect. Right. Okay. And each one has, like, one, one quote on it. Right. Okay. A quote from a past astronaut. What's the thinking behind the rebrand? Because I'm seeing like, I like the type, it's really nice. And then white on black, high contrast, always nice to look at. And then I see a lot of futuristic like cartography lobby. or something. Uh -huh. There's like, like, you got some maps and these look like orbit circles. Mm -hmm. And you know, these yeah, like- I wanted to have something very abstract mm -hmm. and something um, 3D to contrast that. So I made something in 3D and also something very vector-like. So what are these What are these 3D forms? I see a couple, I see there's like some cubes and wireframe and then this kind of looks like a football in a way or something. Yeah. Like what, what, are, what are... You know how they visualize the time-space continuum thing? In, oh, yeah, okay. Yeah, that's kind of what I was trying to go with, but something oh. just very abstract and you don't really know what it is, so you kind of mm -hmm. wanted to ask people like, what is that? So kind of like, how you're curious about space. Right. Yeah. Right. Okay. So looking at this looking at this now after after mm -hmm. years of experience in the design world, what what are you thinking? What do you see here? Could use a little more 3D help. <laughs> more 3D help? <laughs> yeah. Okay. What well, what do you mean? Um I think how I rendered it was this is just like the technical aspect of it mm. was very blurry. I think I you, I made it in Plexus, like the plugin in oh, After, After Effects. Effects. Okay. Right. Yeah. I wasn't a pro at that plugin, so I was just a beginner 
where I didn't really know what I was doing, but I made something that looked really cool and I mm-hmm. just put it in my poster. Got it. Yeah, okay. Yeah. And okay. I think it would look better if I had a specific shape rather than random shapes around. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. That was the first thing I thought too. Mm-hmm. Was like, uh, I kind of upon first glance, I'm like, cool. I like it. There's enough mm-hmm. contrast. I see the type. I get the quotes. Um, but what are these? What are these yeah. shapes around it? You know, and I think after you explained it, the the mm-hmm. thinking behind the idea of you know like seeing the space time continue, you know, like it's like folding over. It's more of this mm-hmm. kind of like uh, cylindrical, like three dimensional thing. Um, I think that's that's awesome. That's a really nice idea. Mm-hmm. Um, it just wasn't obvious. No, yeah, <laughs> no, not not especially. Yeah. yeah. So some of those things throw me off. Mm-hmm. Um, but like the the two D things you have, the very graphic like uh, orbital looking looking things, I, I think that's really nice, you know, and you have some, you know, like you get some of these like nice details and um, contrast and scale happening. So like mm-hmm. really big things next to really small things. Yeah, I think, I think that stuff is great. But yeah, it's, it's like, what is, what is the underlying meaning here, right. you know? And then in terms of just presentation, I, I think, I, I did not immediately get that these were yeah. posters necessarily, uh-huh. but I like the idea that it's a triptych, you know, mm-hmm. three. So what, what might have helped is like just having a little like white space between each one mm-hmm. so so you get a sense that you know they're like three separate posters and pieces and they, they look like posters mm-hmm. but you can kind of fill in the gap in between and see like right. oh they're actually like one long connected thing mm-hmm. I, I think this is far more successful at, l- at least in terms of like indicating this is a, a poster yeah, right? And three posters. Like in context yeah this is where mock-ups play a really big role in how to present your work in a way that uh, makes it really clear and has a, a bit more impact with the, the person looking at it. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, this is this is great. I would almost like lead with this first, yeah. you know, and then kind of break it down into like, okay, here's here's just the, the kind of flat graphic mm-hmm. thing because that, that looks so cool mm-hmm. on the wall, yeah. you know. What are, what are we looking at now? So this is an exhibition within the Adler Planetarium. Oh, okay. Yeah, so this so is like an extension of mm-hmm. the pre- previous project. So okay. besides the uh, rebrand, we had to do something physical, like an installation. Mm-hmm. So I chose to do something with, um, what is it called? The Xbox sensor. Oh, the Kinect. Yeah, 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 yeah okay. the Kinect. Right. Where you code and then you stand in front of the sensor and then something appears. And then if you walk this way, something else appears. Mm-hmm. So it's something like that. Cool. Where okay. I projected onto, it's like those mosquito nets. Mm, okay. That material. So this is the actual actual code. Did you do any of the coding? I did a little bit of the coding. Most of the coding, my TA helped. Okay. Oh, this, this is cool. Okay, so right. what, what is the thinking behind this project? So this project is about, it's called Hidden Wonder, and it's a project about light pollution. Light so pollution. I had different okay. panels of the fabric. Mm-hmm. And so if you stand on the far left, it will show you level one of light pollution, which is like Joshua Tree, and you can see the stars with their naked mm-hmm. eye. Yeah. And as you progress to the last panel, you see the, uh, I, I believe it was like level seven or level 11. I don't remember, it was like an odd number level, mm-hmm. where it's like, Los Angeles, where there's light pollution. Yeah. You can't see the no stars. stars. Yeah. yeah. And there's also cities in between. It just mm. depends on where you're standing. Okay. Yeah. Okay, cool. And we also had to make a poster. Huh. So this one would kind of um, reflect back to that level one sky where you can, s- this one you can't see um, close up. You have to stand really far away. Mm-hmm. And then this one where you can see the W, but then as you progress, you can't really see the R. Mm, so each okay. one represents a level of um, light pollution. Got it. Okay. Yeah. And so what was the goal of the assignment for this? Um, it's just to brand an exhibition, how you would present this exhibition in a museum. Mm. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So from a graphic designer's perspective, it seems like, other than like using real materials and, and light and darkness, mm-hmm. um, I, I see like yeah some like particulate, and then I see uh, some uh, typography. So what what were you thinking uh, when you put this together? Like what, like as a designer, what approach did you take to solve this? I first started out with the posters. I wanted to um, do something. 3D. I kind of wanted to work with transparencies to kind of um, translate that back to oh, this is the means light pollution. Mm-hmm. But then I ultimately found the moiré effect. So I think that 
was the perfect representation of light pollution mm, for okay. print. Okay. Yeah. So uh, usually, you, you know, in, in like photography and design, you try to like avoid the moray effect, mm -hmm. you know. But in this case, you're using it to communicate right. an idea. Yeah, I just um, wanted something really abstract and not something very obvious. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. It's working because yeah. I don't. <laughs> I'm trying to connect the moray with the light pollution uh -huh. and. Like other than the visibility of the letters, mm -hmm. like is is each letter supposed to represent, um, like the more you see of the letter, the less light pollution there is. Or? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Right. So as you go right to left. Okay. So this one is with severe light pollution, where you can't really see the letter. Right. Mm -hmm. And it, that's because of the the color of the light and like the contrast between the two. So what causes it? Or? Yeah. I wish I had the actual poster to show you, mm -hmm. but I think. My dad accidentally threw them away. Well, that's a bummer. <laughs> <Yeah>. Okay. <laughs> but if you see it physically, it's because of the contrast between the dots. Between the dots. It's, okay. Yeah. So you used moire to indicate light level and density and connect back to this like light pollution thing. Mm -hmm. Okay. Cool. Interesting. Did you like this video? Well, there's a second part coming up where Emily and Greg discuss early branding projects that she worked on with Blind while she was still in school. So make sure you're subscribed and you got that notification bell clicked.